Hi everyone, I'm Gina from Tiny Home Tours. Today we have something a little bit different for you guys. We are in Olympia, Washington at the Bayside Bungalow. This little tiny home is actually rented out as an Airbnb. So we were able to stay in it last night and we want to show you guys what it was like. So this is the front door that we just came in. Right beside that when you walk in, there's a little nook area. This is my favorite part of the tiny home. It's super cute and comfy. You can just sit here and look out the window and read a book or do work like I did last night just like this, it's super comfy, and there's even a cup holder right by it. So this is definitely my favorite part of the entire tiny house. Right above the nook, you have the loft area, and it's more like a storage room, but you can also put blankets and pillows up there for an extra person to sleep in. Right across from the nook, we have the living room, which just consists of these two chairs right here, but they can also be used as the kitchen dining table chairs. This is the dining table slash desk. So what we did was just pull these two chairs up and you have a dining table. You also can use this as a desk space instead if you want. This specific table right Right here actually also pulls out so you can make it bigger. Walking more towards the kitchen space, we have the bookshelf area right here. I really like how they have it set up here. So you have the electric heat option and the propane option, which is really fun. It makes it sound like a fireplace and makes it extra cozy in here. So last night it probably got down to like 40 degrees, but first we did have on both of them and it warmed up the place super quick. And we turned off the electric one and just used the propane on low and it kept it warm in here all night. And the major benefit is that it doesn't use up as much electricity as the RV furnace does. Right across from the fireplace area, we've got our closet space. This is pretty much the only closet in the whole house. You have a shelf up top for more storage, a little bench down there, and then underneath storage as well. The hard part about this, I think, would be fitting everything you need in this little closet. But as a rental, this is perfect. That's the only space you would need if you're just staying in here for a temporary time. So moving into the kitchen area, my favorite thing about this spot is that the countertop is probably about twice as much as we have in the RV, which made it really easy for cooking dinner last night. I did cook in here last night. It was simple, you have a ton of space. My only concern is that there's not a whole lot of storage space and I have a lot of spices, a lot of kitchen appliances and I'm not really sure where we would put it because you have this shelf here which I really like is used for tea and then the shelf above it for lots of accoutrements as well. I also really like how they cover the shelving with coffee bean bags, that's a brilliant idea. But you have more storage for pots and pans down here and then also your microwave as well. So you do have a pretty good amount of space for how tiny the area is, but for me personally, I think I might need a little bit more for all of our kitchen things. I also love how well utilized all of the space in the kitchen is. So you've got your paper towels hanging from the ceiling as well as wine glasses, which is a really good idea. You have more shelving over here for your your glasses, your bowls, your plates, and then your drying racks as well. And below that is where you hang all of the mugs. Because this tiny home does stay in one spot, this type of kitchen shelving is perfect because you don't have to worry about anything falling when you move. But if you are doing your own tiny home and you're planning on moving it around a lot, you're probably going to need to think of better ideas for the kitchen in terms of storage, just because all of this is going to fall the second you drive. We have a two burner stove top, which is pretty much all you need. Behind the cutting board, you have your hot water heater. It's an RV style water heater. So all you do is flip this little guy on and he kicks on just like that and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes and it lasted as long as we needed it to for dishes and showering. So then you've got your sink area which is slightly small but it works. Honestly my biggest struggle if we lived in this exact tiny home full time would be not having a big enough fridge space. I keep most of our food in the fridge. Ours is about twice this size so that would be an adjustment. But again if you're just renting it out for Airbnb it's perfect for temporary stays. Right next to the fridge we've got all the storage so you have trash, and all of your cleaning supplies, backup soaps, things like that. I really love how they did it. It's a really good idea to cover it. Moving into the bathroom area. First things first, we've got our composting toilet in the corner. This was my first time using a composting toilet. It was a learning experience for sure, but it actually doesn't smell at all, which I've heard, but I've never experienced it for myself. So we've actually been thinking about putting a composting toilet in our RV. So I'm really glad we got to experience one. And we are distributors for Nature's Head composting toilets. So if you are interested, interested in putting one in your RV or tiny home, check the links below because we'll post different specials that we have going on for them. Moving on from the composting toilet, I really like how they did the shelving. This little guy pops out, this comes down, and you have a fold down vanity to go under your mirror. So that is a brilliant storage idea. As you can see, there's not really any drawers or cupboards in this tiny little spot, but you have to make good use of shelves and hooks. As you can see, this unit has different hooks. You can hang things like blow dryers, 
towels, whatever you want. I don't know if you've noticed, but we did actually hang our bigger shower towels out in the kitchen. There's some hooks in that area because they'll dry faster. You do have to worry about condensation buildup in tiny homes, so we just keep the smaller towels in here. Right above the hooks, you've got a couple more shelving areas. So I ended up liking this shower space more than our RV shower. Even though this is probably the same size, if not a little bit smaller than the RV shower, it felt like I had more space, and I'm pretty sure that's because of the shower curtain. In the RV, we just have the sliding door, which kind of makes it feel cramped because you can't like stick your arm out, but I could in here and that made it feel like there was more space. For this particular unit, and I think it's a great idea for all tiny homes, they reclaim their gray water, which means they use it for things like gardening. So that means that we have to use natural products, natural soap, shampoos, conditioners, which we use in the RV anyway, so it really wasn't that big of a difference. But it's awesome because the unit actually provides them for you to make sure that they can reuse that gray water. So this ladder just slides down and it's super lightweight so anyone can do this. That slides down and it leads up to the loft. So obviously we don't have this down all the time because that would take up half the house. You just put it up there and then pull it down whenever you're ready to go upstairs. So we have the loft area. It's really tiny and nice and cozy. Sleeping in it was more comfortable than I thought. And my favorite part was that you have this window over here and you can see the sun and the birds chirping in the morning. You even have some space beside the beds to store things like your phone, chargers, books. It was really comfy when we slept in here last night. It does get super toasty up here, so we had to keep a window open for ventilation. So overall, we had a really great time in the tiny home. We're super glad that we were able to stay in it. It gave us a lot of good ideas for our own future tiny home. For this particular unit, it wouldn't work for us just because there aren't any fresh and gray water tanks, but we did get some good ideas for our own tiny home, such as whether or not we want a composting toilet, where we would put a desk space, the fact that I would maybe want an additional bathroom sink besides the kitchen sink, and that we love the nook and we want something like that in our own tiny house. So we want to thank Brittany from Bayside Bungalow for having us in your perfect tiny house, and to see more of our touring videos, check us out on tinyhome.tours. Come on, Fuzz! Come back. Come on, everybody's coming in.